Hey guys, I'm TADDY, Anna, but today we are back with Destructible. I just got off work, I just came home. What better way to relax than to do some homework while listening to the most three most funniest guys I've ever heard in my life on Destructible. Uh, Alexa, it's Destructible time. Sorry, I'm not sure. Alexa, Destructible. Here you go. Alexa, turn on distractable on, uh, uh, oh, it's called, uh, did you mean lights? No, put, turn on distractable on S Spotify. That's it. Distraction radio from Spotify. No, oh God, Alexa. Uh... Put on Distractable on Spotify. Distraction radio from Spotify. Alexa, Distractable on Spotify. What's the newest episode? Getting distractions from Spotify. Here's the latest episode. Mamma Mia, the Queen is dead. Alexa, stop. <sighs> Never works. Alexa. Play Distractable on Spotify. Getting Distractable from Spotify. Here's the latest episode, Devil's Advocate. Devil's Advocate? Are you sure this is it? Good evening, gentlemen. Okay, sorry. sorry. Welcome to Distractable. A winner production. This week, Emmy Award-nominated Mark leads the proceeding while Wade sells scuffers and Bartos feel good flats on TikTok. From screaming infants on planes to errant shopping carts, from personal nukes to world hunger. It's a game of oratory excellence that pulls no punches. Yes, it's time for Devil's Advocate. Now sit back and prepare to be distracted. Distract and enjoy me. Enjoy the show. Thank you. So, welcome to Distractable. If it's your first time here, why? Why haven't you shown up sooner? Yeah, why? You should have been here earlier. <laughs> there's Way earlier. Why are you here? Yeah, here. No, 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 no. I'm, glad you're, I'm <laughs> glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. But why are you here so late? No, no, no. I, I, this is turning very around from what I was intending. Uh, okay. I'm glad you're here, and you should be here. And I'm so happy to see you. You should have been here sooner. Uh, no, no. Well, that is a kind of but, but also yeah. no. Yes, but, okay. no, but no, but no. Yes, yeah. but no. All right. So in this episode, we're going to be doing something that we usually do, which is talking to each other. I know it's a novel concept. <laughs> three dudes on a podcast talking to each other. Um, is that the topic? That's <laughs> <to each other. laughs> Today we're talking about something we've not talked about before, talking to each other. Yeah. We're going to sit in there for a little while, like, wait, one more, wait, research it. Yeah. All right, talk to each other. <laughs> or what's it like talking to Bob? I don't know, sometimes it's really insightful and nice and it makes me feel heartfelt. Sometimes I feel crushed, my spirit just ground into dust. Like my entire ego. I'm the judge. You can't treat me like this. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I love you. Thank right. you. All right. Uh, Wade, how are you doing? He points to Bob. No. I'm good. Healing up. Whatever. Life's fine. Staying cool as the fall and the beautiful leaves come down in my perfect Cincinnati residence. That's definitely not dripping water. I started very depressing and got really poetic. I mean, I do miss the falling leaves. I just saw them like a few weeks ago. It was very pretty and I do miss it. So We have leaves up here. You have leaves up there? Mm -hmm. We have leaves. I saw them. Do they change? Do they burn down? They're changing. Mm -hmm. They're filling my yard as we speak. Wow, we don't get those down here. Yeah. Sadly. We get them better. So you're telling me, you're telling me I could move to where you are. You should move to the bay, man. You should move to the bay. Move to the bay. Move to the bay. Move to the bay. What if we all move to the Berg instead? The Berg? Oh, yeah. You want to live in Pittsburgh? Oh, not that. Yeah, Pittsburgh. I you don't love know. Pittsburgh. Yeah. We get all root for the Steelers, your favorite football team. Go, Berg. Go, Berg. I'm just going to go ahead and subtract two points from myself. And not say uh, anything right. at all. <laughs> that, that will apply. It does it. It does in fact apply. Wait, minus two points. Well, then I'm gonna take two points for Bob too. No, no, you can only self-report. There's no other. Oh, can yeah. I give more points to me? Four points for my poetic. Nope. Oh, okay. Negative four points. Understood. <laughs> too much poetry. Negative four. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm do this to myself. All right. Uh, plus four points, which brings you back down to negative two. What? This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Guys, do you ever find yourself just being too good? No. No. Do you ever just bask in the glory of how amazing your life is and how everything is going right? Uh, uh yeah, no. You ever 
to sit back and look at your mountain of accomplishments and think to yourself, wow, I've really done it. I remember thinking I was good like two minutes ago. Like, no. Mm. Well, I mean, I just want to say as much as it seemed like my life can be perfect and amazing, things can still get to me. You know, everything is working for me. Everything's working great. <laughs> like, it's great. I am not stuck in any way. But navigating any of life's challenges can make you feel unsure. And I might need a career change. I'm too tired of all the success. We can keep doing the podcast, right? If you guys ever feel like I do, which I'm sure you do, you must at some point, there are therapists through BetterHelp that are ready and willing to help you with those challenging emotions. Might need that after this talk. Mm -hmm. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. And it's affordable, which I'm sure you guys need. Yes, uh, I do. Anyway, just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with the therapist. And if things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist at any time. It couldn't be simpler. Right, Wade? You need simple. Simple does sound like me. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash distractible. Wait, that's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Bob Wright this down, D-I-S-T-R-A-C-T-I-B-L-E. Even your amazing lives can be a little bit better. This episode of Distractable is sponsored by Manscaped. Whether it's for a friend, or the friends in your pants. You can make this a season to be jolly with Manscaped. I'll shave your balls for you and your bum 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 bum. Santa cares about his sack, <laughs> and so should you. <laughs> oh, yes I do. Santa? Yes, it's me, Santa. <laughs> I heard you talking about my sack. I won't shave I... your balls for you. Oh, no, 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 no. 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 I use the lawnmower, see, for lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer oh, and the weed wiper nose and ear trimmer. I can use them both though. at the same time. There is no hair down there. Run, 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 run. Run, run. run. As much as I wish this hadn't happened, and I had just bought it for myself, it's too late for me. But you can get 20% off, plus free shipping, when you use code distractible at manscaped.com. That's 20% off, with free shipping, at M-A-N-S-C-A-P-E-D.com. Use code distractible, D-I-S-T-R-A-C-T-I-B-L-E. Manscaped, get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. All right, so, uh, is that all you guys have to say? For your I lives. have an exciting update. Oh, I didn't even get to go. Oh, right, Bob. <laughs> that sounds like everything, Mark. I think we're ready to move on. I know everyone waits. <laughs> yeah. Waits on the edge of their seat uh -huh. and then can't get enough of my semi regular TikTok updates. Whoa. Uh, Been a while. I've got a new favorite genre. Okay, I'm excited. Is it getting older? Yeah. <sighs> Every minute. It's uh, TikTok has learned that I like a new thing, and it turns out there's a lot of creators who do this bit. Have you guys seen the TikToks and or videos on YouTube, probably, of people, men and women, walking around in a public place like a mall or a park or somewhere mm -hmm. near another group of people where they're fake. The farts are fake. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so farts. I've, like I've seen that. On them that just does like the wettest fart that you could imagine. Like an example would be a guy is in a park. There's a group of people next to him, and he just is like, oh. Oh no, oh God. <laughs> like the most awful fart and then he, he like you know how you kind of squat if you have like an issue or whatever and he's all oh, oh god i gotta go home and he like runs away and everyone in the area around him is just like oh oh <laughs> it's my new favorite kind of comedy because it's harmless but it's always funny there's never been i've watched dozens if not hundreds of these at this point every time the reaction is some people are like Ew, ew, ew. The rest of everyone around that person laugh hysterically. And the guy doesn't even shit his pants. And there's one I found of a girl who does this. And people don't know how to react to a girl pretending to have shit her pants with a violent fart. Because apparently people think women don't fart. I don't know. <laughs> it's perfect comedy. Yeah. Always funny. I imagine that one guy that walks up and is like, 
my lady, I came here to help you, and like presents her with a new gown he has been keeping in his backpack oh for years, <laughs> waiting for that moment. Can I help you with your pants problem? They keep it under their fedora. <laughs> I was waiting for this. <laughs> They, they take their multi-wrapped <laughs> leather wristband off and put it on as a belt. Yeah. Allow me to cover this puddle that you've made with my coat. Walk over it. I shall soak it up with my pants. <laughs> Sit down right in it. It was me that shat. I did it. I shat her pants. <laughs> but anyway, it's perfect comedy. Nobody gets hurt. Nobody gets embarrassed because the person who would be embarrassed knows what's happening. Mm -hmm. It's just... Oh, God, it's so good. It's a heartfelt, feel-good story. Just bringing joy everywhere. It is. It's a real family adventure. Hell is old as time. Not a love story, necessarily, but... Look for the fart prank stuff on TikTok. How would I even so search for that? What <laughs> key, what hashtag, what anything? I don't... I found one once and liked it. That's what happened. I don't know. If you're lost on the internet, there's a way to find yourself back. Look for the fart talks. And it will guide you. That's the thing about TikTok. I've never been able to successfully search for something I've looked for. I have. You can search. It's possible. They have a search function, but it's just like, I don't know. Because they're always captioned something that's absolutely nothing related to the topic. Like, you can't search for that one fart prank video. It's just never called that one fart prank video. It's called, ha <laughs> got him, or something like that. And it's like <laughs> the same title for everything. It's going to be a search term, Guru. One time I guru. saw the cockatiel who sings... And I searched for like cockatiel sings happy birthday, white bird. Mm. I found him. His name's Cumulus. He's hilarious. Wait, can Guru Harold help us find TikTok? What? I'm so what you know, help us searching TikTok. I just gotta say, like TikTok search function, I've never used it just because I only use the for you page. I don't even follow anybody. It's just like that's all I do. Um, yeah, that's but funny. YouTube and Google, like they got searched down. Like you, you trying to find a video, you search for even something remotely close to it on YouTube, you find it like immediately. So that's true. they're Very true. like it could be better. But then again, I'm not going out of my way to find things like searching because usually people just send me the TikTok if they're wanting to share. That's the only TikToks I watch are the ones that people send me, and really, it's only been Bob lately, and Bob's not. Sent me one in like a month. It's all fart content all the time. Dude, no, it goes through cycles, but I'm I'm in a real fart place right now. I got football <laughs> from him, but not not farts. No, it was Bowie Juro. The Cincinnati sports men's <laughs> Bowie Juro. Bowie nice. Juro. Bo Juro. Bo Juro. Bo Juro. All right. Well, is that all the life updates? Because that was a very satisfying TikTok update. Yeah. Um, I will not award points for this because I wasn't going to award points for the small talk round, but somehow Wade still has negative two points. I don't know how that happened. I can't remember. You should award points for this round then. I subtract two points for myself for up upstaging Wade so dramatically. It's unfair. That's fair. Ha! Negative two for Bob. You're both at... Yes, actually, you are. Yeah, we're tied. I want to break the tie. I give myself one point. You can't do that. Uh, we definitely established that already. You could take another one away, I guess. Yeah, you want to take one away? I don't know. I don't want to break it that way. <laughs> I've learned from my mistakes. You always said you wanted to break the tie. You must make your wishes more specific. All right. I'm no longer a points masochist like I was the original distractible Wade. Yeah, season one Wade. You just like to see how much your points can take. <laughs> you take another Hit me. Good. Hit me. Points masochist. You just want to reach the limit of your points. Oh, beat me with more negative points. You want me to? I'll do that. <laughs> oh, I was channeling old Wade. Was that the you know, authentic request? Well, I'll go. I turned a new leaf. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. I like points now. Uh, Will, hit the music. How long is this music? I, I have no idea. It's really dramatic, <laughs> really intense, <laughs> really dark themes. Uh, oh God, it's spooky. Well, they're just like, woo! <laughs> if you could see the video of us right now, which you can't. Oh, yes. Which you can't, but maybe in the future you can. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe soon. Maybe sooner than you think. Maybe now. I don't even know. <laughs> maybe yesterday. Maybe. Maybe. They're going to do a live stream tomorrow. To I want to try to see if I can catch it. Advocate. Oh, yeah. The debate show oh, that... Man. It's fine. What? Yes. What? What? Yes. What? Hey. We're happy. We're happy. We're happy. We're happy. We're happy. You love debating. You love philosophical discussions. We're happy. You don't seem you happy. You didn't seem happy. I reacted happy. You reacted mixed. Am I devil's advocate happy? Uh -huh. Or the normal happy? <laughs> I'm being devil's advocate. I was happy. <laughs> All right, you don't sound happy. Happy bonus points for being happy? No, you don't. Devil's Advocate is a game show where we have friendly debates. However, these debate topics are of things that are generally agreed to be not necessarily the best things. However, it is up for discussion. One of you will take the role of the pro of a certain thing. 
or I guess against a certain thing. Oh work. no! And the other will play the devil's advocate. It's fine. Why are you so worried? I, I don't I'm reminded understand. Of a time in high school where uh, we had a, a history class thing, and uh, I was assigned the role of like defending giving the death penalty to minors, and I had to like, <laughs> argue for it in class. Oh, easy. Have you met them? And I'm just having flashbacks. I'm writing that down. <laughs> <laughs> That'll come up later. That's a secret tool we're going to use later. <laughs> oh, <ooh. laughs> great. Whoa. All right. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Excellent. Excellent. But we're going to start off with topics that are not so <laughs> intense. And we're going to start off with some things, and I want to figure out a way to decide who goes first. Is there any volunteers for who wants to play the first devil's advocate, or should I pick randomly? Random. Me, baby. Oh, Bob wants to be the devil's advocate. He wants to pick. Give it to me. Which one of us do you pick, Bob? No, he... I, want to be the the devil. I was volunteering oh. to be the devil's advocate. I thought you were volunteering to pick which one of us was the devil's advocate. I thought there was another step in between. No, I just am it. I I I Pick guess me. he technically did, did. Pick yeah, me. and he's picked himself. Aha! So, in this first debate, you're debating each other, right? Okay. And you only get a point if the devil's advocate successfully convinces me, as you debate, that their opinion is superior. And the thing that is generally agreed to be bad is somehow good, right? Deal. So, wait, I don't you get believe it. that there shouldn't be crying babies on planes, right? You'd think that they're a menace, you'd think that they're a nuisance. Bob, okay. you're playing devil's advocate of how people should tolerate that or endure it for the betterment of society. Does okay. the devil's advocate get to go second so that they can work on whatever yes. arguments are posed? Yeah, the person... Yeah. Which one's the more common opinion? I feel like I'm the devil's <laughs> advocate here. That's real... I'm certain real slow ball. I wanted to get ones that could go either way in the beginning just to let it actually be a debate. And then we're going to warm up into let more... Let and I'm also devil's advocating myself for this, because I don't care about baby. <laughs> That's the whole point of the exercise. <laughs> were you ever in debate club? Yeah, wait, no, you don't like crying babies on planes, Wade. Done. Easy. That's your opinion. Bob, you... That's uh, such a strong opinion. You are advocating for the crying babies. Oh, I know what I believe. Okay, cool. All right, Wade, take it away. All right, look, when you are on a plane, there is right. limited space, there right. are limited places to go, and right. you are surrounded on all sides by ceiling, floor, walls. There's no open space for sound to get away. You are trapped in an echo chamber of pain and suffering where mm -hmm. your diseases are already spreading as it is, and mm -hmm. now you're adding the never-ending noise of a child who, not on top of the noise, is also just spewing venom and disease out into the air that you're all breathing. We mm -hmm. all know babies are disgusting little monsters that eat whatever they find on the floor. And then whatever they're getting, they're spitting out into the air for us to breathe in. They are a menace. Not only should they be not be allowed in planes, they shouldn't be allowed outside in general. They should be in their crib until they are at least four years old. Leave them there. God damn, Wade, you just... <laughs> You didn't have to go that hard. You know, well, you I'm going said, for like, it. Like, we should ban babies from the planet Earth. Uh, well, interesting. Okay. Just, like, a space station? Fine. Fill it with the babies so they're not spewing their venom here. I don't want to breathe in their baby air. All right. Not even human. They're monsters. Until they reach a certain age. Isn't fine? I don't know who the devil, who's the devil's advocate in this one. I'm actually. the good guy. <laughs> you can tell by my tone. All right, Bob, uh, take it away. That was a very compelling argument with uh, putting babies in space stations. I I, I feel very motivated to believe in that. Wouldn't you have liked space as a baby? <laughs> I'm going to start by just uh, disregarding a few arguments that my opponent has made. Mm -hmm. I feel like babies in space uh, does not have any merit. I think we all know that the, the right answer to that one is babies should be allowed on Earth. Mm. Oh, I'm also going to just contend that I think people would believe babies should probably not be left in their crib until they're four years old. There's probably mm. scientific data to back that up, but I don't think it's worth talking too much about. Yeah, for the baby's sake. What I want to say Who cares about them? About is us. that my opponent is not valuing my time as he values his own. Right. Airplanes are metal tubes of suffering and misery on a purpose. Mm. If you are in an airplane, it is because you are traveling. In the best case scenario, you're going on a vacation. You're visiting a family that lives far away. You're doing something good, doing something positive. If the travel to your location was pleasant, 
you wouldn't even know the difference when you got there. If traveling was easy, it wouldn't be a journey to get to the place you want to be, to reach the people that you want to reach. If traveling was pleasant, people would just go on airplanes for vacation. I don't know why people go on cruise ships, but if traveling on a cruise ship was pleasant, that would be way more popular than it is and less of a joke because I feel like people make fun of cruise ships as cesspools of floating filth and debauchery. And we all know that there's some level of truth to that. But in the worst case scenario, if you're on an airplane for work, if you're on an airplane because something has happened, you're going to visit someone in the hospital, someone has passed away, all these bad things. Compared to the relative suffering and displeasure and discomfort of an airplane, you will feel lighter and better about whatever is happening at your destination than you did on the plane. No matter how bad of a thing has happened, barring some very specific and tragic circumstances, the airplane was worse. The airplane is suffering because without suffering, there can be no joy. <sighs> also, my opponent contended that babies spew disease with their screaming and their juices and their coughing. Well, it is unpleasant to have a baby screaming near you or coughing near you or on you or whatever. Babies are not the ones who spread disease. Adults are the ones who spread disease. Babies are vulnerable. Babies haven't been alive long enough to have such a robust immune system as to survive the filth that is recirculated so aggressively on airplanes. If anyone should be banned from airplanes for the safety of some passengers at the expense of all passengers, it's adults who are not familiar with the baby who should be banned from planes. You're on a plane with a strange baby? Marshall takes you off. You book a flight and there's two, three, four, five babies on that flight? Rebooked. The babies are going somewhere and it's important because they're young. They need to visit grandparents. They're going for some experimental treatment at the Mayo Clinic and they have to go now because it's a limited whatever. Whatever the baby is doing, it's more important than what you're doing. And whatever you think about how gross babies may be, because they can be, you're worse. Ban adults from airplanes. Babies have a right to fly. Only babies in planes. Interesting. Okay. All right. So you I rebut. Uh, I will allow you a very quick rebuttal. That way we can keep the pace moving. But I like your argument of comparative suffering because I'm always a big proponent of darkest before the dawn. You know, how can you have uh, joy without sadness? The other argument about uh, disease, I feel like that's an attack on wave character. And no matter how valid that may be, I will not take personal attacks in this debate. We'll debate the topic. Uh, Wade, you have 30 seconds for a rebuttal. Go. Great. Bob tackled the, the fact that not all travel is good. In fact, I'd argue most of it's probably for work. Most people do travel the most frequently for work or something like that, which is not necessarily fun. People spend a lot of money, even for the worst seats. You should expect some level of peace with all of the stress travel already brings on top of the expense. And getting in a bad mood to start your day will make it harder to bounce back. Suffering could happen the day before or after or whatever. But if you're already having a bad day, having the baby screaming and whatnot is not going to be good. And babies will not remember where they're going anyway, even if it's for vacation. So what's the point of them even going anywhere? That's good. That's good. I like that rebuttal. That's good. Thank you. Bob, this is your last 30 seconds to make sure that you get your point across as devil's advocate, and this will make or break you getting a point this round. Are you ready? Yes. And go. My opponent contends that suffering should only happen at certain times for certain purposes, that they must control the suffering so you can have the happiness when you want it. I posit that that is not how life is. The reality of the world is that you may suffer at any given moment. Life may be tragic at any given moment, but life may also be joyous at any given moment, and you must savor the happy times when they come. Airplanes are not a happy place. There is no joy to be had. You must savor what comes before and after your flight. Save the babies. All right, save those babies. Mitigate suffering, so do it. More arguments. That's cheating. He's cheating. I think, honestly, I was mainly leaning this way already. The shooting babies into space stations while a compelling thing is a little extreme. A little bit, a little bit extreme. I'm going to give the point to the devil's advocate because, yes, usually flight, especially nowadays, especially an ultra economy way in the back, is suffering incarnate. And... As much as I've traveled, I have not encountered too many problems with crying babies. And when it has, I usually have pity because you usually see the mom and it's like, oh, it's not good. So I'll actually give the point to Bob there. Ha -ha. To be real, I have soundproof headphones, so babies never bother me on flights either. All right, that's fair. That's fair. I thought for sure you'd bring that up, Bob. Just literally, you can cancel them out. <laughs> <laughs> but it's over, so you already won. You don't get my argument. No, I like to listen to it. Yeah. It reminds me where I came from. I like it. That was really good. As uh, I'm going to start setting uh, like a 90 second time for the debate for each person. It's probably a good idea. What did you just do, Wade? The scream. 
<laughs> this is why we can't have the video on. <laughs> don't look at oh me. man, yeah, no, I don't know what I just saw it like corner of my eye. Now we're going to get slightly more contentious, and we will get more contentious as we go on. And apparently, we're going to end with death penalty for minors um, because that was probably the most that was the most contentious of the things that I right. have, I have seen. <laughs> Actually, I don't even know. Uh, anyway, so this next one, Wade, you are now the devil's advocate. Bob, you are aligning with this opinion that not returning your shopping cart is a bad thing. Okay. Mm. You are a big believer in returning your shopping cart. Wade, you don't return your shopping cart ever, and you're going to tell me and Bob why. All right? Why do I keep getting the shit end of every <laughs> argument? <laughs> I mean, it's not that shit, shit end. Oh, 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 my no. God. Yeah. Okay, I hate babies and I'm a slob. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> but you, this is your opportunity to win the point here, right? Sure. You can only win the point as the devil's advocate. Uh -huh. If you don't, if you are on the other side and you, you successfully negate the devil's advocate, you don't get a point. They just don't get a point. Right? It's an attack and defense. All right. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. uh, Bob, you are first. go first? Yeah. Yes. Yep. All right. Three, two, one. There are three main issues surrounding the return of shopping carts to either the corral or the front of the store. The three issues being safety, human consideration, and sociopathy. First of all, it's an obvious concern that having shopping carts rolling around a parking lot, haphazardly taking up both parking spots and walking locations, is unfair and dangerous for anyone who has to use that parking lot. How many times have you tried to pull into a spot only to have a cart occupying just enough of a space so that your car won't fit? It's annoying, it's inconvenient, it ruins the purpose and design of the parking lot. It's a big issue. Human consideration, it's someone's job to bring those carts back in. They're polite enough to let you leave them in the parking lot, in the corrals, but if you're gonna make that poor teenager working for six bucks an hour, not getting paid enough for it to be worth it, run around the whole parking lot and gather up your scattered shopping carts, it's both inconsiderate to them and anyone who might need a cart if they can't gather them up efficiently, if they can't keep the things stocked up from the store. And finally, being such an inconsiderate, rude and thoughtless person that you think it's okay to just leave whatever thing you're no longer using wherever you were last using it, you should probably get checked out. It's a sign of a lack of humanity and empathy, which are things that this world needs more of. You could learn something by trying to learn empathy by returning your shopping carts to their correct location. All right. That was very compelling. A good reason of why I personally also believe that you should return your shopping cart. Now, used I love the point about sociopathy. Like, I, I feel like that could have been explored further, but obviously the time limit. Mm -hmm. So, Wade, why are you a sociopath and don't return your cart? Are you ready? Real quick, just so you know, you guys are lagging balls. When you do your countdown, it goes from nine to, like, you staring. So I do not see a countdown well, I, for the stuff. I pull up a timer. I guess, I guess. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay. I pulled up a timer on my own, so when Mark said start, you just started. Yeah, yeah. That's what, it's way more All consistent. Right. We'll have that technology. Just type timer <laughs> into Google. F open your phone or something. <laughs> I'm getting it. We have 90 seconds. Is that right? Yes, yes. 130. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. All right. In three, two, one, go. All right, so look, safety. Let's talk about safety. Sure, shopping carts getting in the way sounds like a dangerous issue, but you know what's more dangerous for you as an individual is spending more time walking around a parking lot. People drive like maniacs. They back out without looking, they're on their phone, they're texting, they're doing all kinds of things. The longer you spend walking around with your shopping cart, the longer you have a chance of getting hit by a dangerous driver. Get in, get out as fast as possible. If the cart is in your way, blame the workers for their laziness of not grabbing them and putting them back where they belong. <laughs> <laughs> that brings me to my next point. Consideration. <laughs> you know what? Being considerate putting your cart away? No. You know what you're being more considerate? If you don't. Why? Why? Because you're creating jobs. What are presidents judged on? Oh, I created so many jobs. <laughs> well, why can't I be judged on that as well? If you need more people grabbing carts from the parking lot and putting them back, then you know what? I created jobs. I'm helping the economy. I'm a good person. I have done good for the world. So safety, consideration, covered. On top of that, I'm giving more space for more people to come in because I'm getting the hell out of there. And do you want to go and deal with waiting for people to grab their carts? No, the cart I need is right on the way to the store. Easy. Done. I'm helping people, not hurting. <laughs> and if you look at it the other way, then you must be a glass half empty kind of guy. <laughs> I, you yield your time. I concede the rest of my time. <laughs> Bob, I gotta admit, that was an extremely compelling argument from the side. I get a rebuttal. I get a rebuttal. 
rebuttal. I know, I know. You do get a rebuttal. It'll be a 30 second rebuttal. I need to reset my timer. But that was a very compelling argument. I was clearly in your favor and now I'm I'm leaning away. Yeah. All right. Whenever you're ready, three, two, one, go. My opponent argues that it's unsafe to spend time walking across a parking lot. Well, I would posit that the reason it's unsafe is because a parking lot is littered with carts. You know why people drive crazily through a slow, almost motionless parking lot? It's because they're dodging obstacles that should not be there. Also, creating more work is not creating more jobs. Making a job worse than it already is in a world where no one is appreciated, no one is paid commensurately, and no one is treated fairly by their employer is only ruining the life of a person who already has a job. All right. That was very clear very concise it's a good point directly attacked your point they're weighed about you know making life easier ancillarily the job creation point but the president analogy still sticks with my mind also my sociopathy argument was so unassailable he didn't even mention it so that's true that's true yes <laughs> But I will not consider it was not in the timer, so I cannot consider that information. You can know that he didn't talk about it. I do, yeah, that's right, it's okay. true. You're Wait, smart. are you ready? <laughs> uh, thank you, yeah, that's right. Wait, are you ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go. Well, first of all, sociopaths, you know, I join in. Who cares if you're a sociopath or not? We're creating jobs, and that matters. And let's get back to safety. You know why the parking lot's unsafe? It isn't carts. How many horrible things happen because a cart was in the way? You know why horrible things happen? People aren't paying attention. They're walking all over the place where they shouldn't be, looking at their phones, people driving around their phones. Phones are the issue. Carts, okay, you see a cart there, you don't park. You see someone double park, taking up two spots? Those are the assholes. A cart, you can just park a little bit behind. You can get out and move it. Easy. That's the cart you take with you. Thumbs up. <laughs> All right, that was a good point, and, and it does make me think of the idea that people are walking around more, which does create problems every time I'm in the grocery store trying to find a parking spot. It is chaos in there, and there is something to be said about people having to return their carts, moving around and getting in the way. It does maybe slow things down a little bit. And the job creation, I can't, I can't deny these are extremely compelling points. And uh, I wrote down the safety, human consideration, consideration and sociopathy. Now, sociopathy was glanced over and I'm not 100% sure on the true definition of sociopathy. Me either, that's why I didn't mention it. <laughs> no, you said, come on in, you said pools open, come on in, sociopaths. I said sociopaths unite. <laughs> that's just a bold statement. <laughs> uh. Without knowing the exact definition, it sure is. It's, it's... Little regard for other person's emotions, rights, or... That's just being human, man. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> we can <use> <laughs> With the nonchalance, you know, I really got to embrace the nonchalance. You know, Wade, I, I hate to say it because I am very much, I've said so long in my life that if you don't return your shopping cart, you don't belong in society. But man, Sociopaths Unite really gets me to my core in the job creation. Wait, he, he said, he oh, said more, so I want him to say a thing. Mm -hmm. Not returning your cart doesn't reduce the amount of walking. It displaces it to another person. So you're essentially forcing someone else to be unsafe. You're not reducing anyone. To get the cart without it, go get it. It's in the park parking lot unless you park right next to a cart and that's the only cart you need perfect spot you're walking wherever the cart may be because they're not centralized they're randomly scattered by sociopaths we can a little fun game out it's like hit me get the best cart how does he doesn't come that. back well you're a sociopath <laughs> 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 I gotta admit, Wade, you really argued the sociopath <sighs> perspective very well. Thank you. I really want to give you the point. I don't think I should, but I just want to. And because I'm judge, <laughs> that's why you will. I'm gonna give you a point for that. That was just such a well argued. I didn't think you'd get there. 2028, vote for me. Never have to return a card again. He's, he's just like his approval ratings just through the roof. That's me. And like, I don't want to vote for you, but you're, I'm like, I just approve of what you've done. <laughs> I, can't, I can't disagree with anything he said. How am I supposed to? <laughs> I hate everything. I said, but I had to embrace my son. <laughs> <laughs> uh, winning is more important than my integrity, damn it. Uh, obviously, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, <coughs> you a good politician. You embraced it very well. Very well. Okay, so now, thank you. we're switching roles again. Okay. Bob, you are now the devil's advocate. Oh. Wade, you believe in speed limits. You think speed limits help safety or whatever your argument is? Like, generally speaking, the speed limits are around there and people may break them because they don't agree with them. Bob might be one of these. Whatever his argument takes, Wade, you're a proponent of speed limits. Bob, you're fully against. Sure. Are you ready, Wade? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine? That's fine? Speed limits? 
No, no, speedloaders are good. I was just gonna work on my ideas, but I can I can work as yeah, as I go. That's good. That's fine. Do you need a minute? No, I'm, I'm good. I can come up with enough ideas. 90 okay. seconds, right? We could do 60 seconds if you don't want to have to fill an idea. I do have a big list. I, I think I can talk for 90 seconds. I'm good. I believe in you. All right, if you're ready, then uh, start in three, two, one. Very obviously, speed limits are a safety necessity because of many, many different facets. First of all, car designs are made in such a way where they test cars to move within certain speed parameters. And if you are uncapped, sure, like in a city limit where you're not going to be able to go that fast anyway because of traffic or having to turn, so on and so forth, maybe that's less of an issue. But on a highway, open road, rural area, if you're pushing 120 in a car that's designed to maybe go 70 on average, you're probably beyond the safety specs of where that car should be, as well as the safety specs of what that car can take should something go wrong and you end up in an accident, flat tire, so on and so forth. Animals, people, things cross the road. Branches fall on the road. Do you have time to see them if you're going 600 miles an hour? No. Probably not. So you need to have a limit for those as well. On top of that, just for being able to process the information that you are seeing so you can make good rational thought. If you are going so fast that you can't even see what you're passing, odds are you or someone else is going to end up dead. And we here care about people. We care about ourselves. We do not want to cause that kind of harm just because we're in a hurry. That is a selfish mindset. And we need to care about other people and about the safety of them as well as ourselves so car design other people your own safety there's really no argument to be said for not having a speed limit because if it's completely uncapped chaos will ensue because it only takes a few people pushing things way over the limit not having any repercussions to kill us all mm -hmm. well spoken i think that encapsulated all the arguments for uh speed limits at really emphasizing safety i hear you loud and clear bob are you ready for your counterpoint yes all right three two one Speed limits are clearly designed to extract money from a population which already pays its fair share and you put that money directly in the pockets of police departments, sheriff's departments, whatever, who should already have adequate funding. And if they don't, that is an issue unrelated to driving an automobile. My opponent talked about the safety of traveling at whatever speed you may choose. He supposed that anyone at any time would choose to travel as fast as physically possible. Ignoring the fact that humans have an innate sense of self-preservation, somehow assuming that people would have no understanding that any danger they may pose because of their speed is equally posed to them at any point in time. Traffic is safer when it flows naturally. Traffic is safer when you don't have people who are obeying the speed limit, but are actually traveling 10 or 15 miles an hour slower than the normal flow of traffic is on the highway. It's not an argument that the law doesn't work so we shouldn't have it. I propose that the law exists purely as a manipulation and a, and a controlling of power around the roadways, allowing police to make stops for nearly arbitrary reasons, allowing entities to control what you're doing, people will not put themselves in harm's way. And if they are incompetent or stupid enough to do so, they will be the same amount of incompetent or reckless, whether or not there is a speed limit. You cannot stop the ones who will cause terrible accidents with a sign. All right, that is a good point. Ooh, speed limits. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I was going to say, but that works. All right. That was that was, that was was a good point. You know, those were all things that I didn't think about. I think that that's very compelling. Uh, Wade, what do you have to say in response to those arguments? Value. So we're talking about money. So saving money. Accidents, those cost money. What is the value of a human life that might be lost from all of this? That costs money. How much will insurance cost on uncapped road? That's going to go up. So where are you really going to end up saving or spending more money? Safety. I did not say everyone would be speeding. I said it only takes a few in order to ruin it all. So a few people doing whatever they want. On top of that, you're trusting that they're all going to be coherent. There's alcohol, there's drugs, there's cell phones, there's sleepiness, all kinds of other factors that can contribute. And with safety versus freedom, there's always got to be some kind of compromise, and that limit has to exist somewhere. All right, fair points, all fair points. Uh, Bob, are you ready to rebut? Yeah. Three, two, one. The core of my opponent's rebuttal revolved around factors that all lead to people ignoring speed limits regardless of what they are. I think that point is moot. And I think if you're going to assume that a sign with a number on it will stop a drunk driver from speeding, then you don't understand why drunk driving is dangerous. I would also posit that the amount of money that you may save uh, on a ticket versus an accident is unconnected to whether or not you have an accident versus a ticket. People get ticketed for seven miles an hour over the speed limit all the time. You do not get into an accident because that is so reckless a speed mm. that was a good point because was was your point there that it's moot because people do that anyway yeah if you're gonna say whether that or speed not limits a speed limit or not will protect you against drunk drivers or reckless drivers 
they don't care what the speed limit is. They're drunk mm -hmm. or reckless. Yeah, I didn't quite catch the, the value proposition fully, but like that is that is a good point. Like drunk drivers would occur regardless of whether the speed limit. Yeah. In fact, for, wasn't for a while there, Montana had like no speed limit. Then they, they were changed that in or something. I don't remember. Yeah. And there is the Audubon, which does not have a speed limit, and people drive that all the time. And, you know, accidents are, I don't believe, statistically more likely there than anywhere else in the world. In a weird way, because I am also, like, I have, I have certain things. But if I have to go, like, point for point, like, debate, I'm kind of leaving Baba just a bit. Just a bit. Just a bit. It's very close because I, I don't believe that it should be all uncapped, but I do think there should be. Like, if I'm going out to, like, Las Vegas on the stretches of road there where there's not a car around, like, my car can go faster. Why can't I just go? And people do the, the race across the country to see how, how fast you can get from one side we to the other. We what the caps should be. We what? were where there should be a cap, period. So if Joe Schmo gets his car and straps two rockets on the side and can go 500 miles an hour, that's uncapped. I think that breaks other laws, but... <laughs> We'll get to those laws. We're about to debate those laws, but I am going to give Bob a point for that. That was very, very well argued, but he was really close there. There's a lot surprised of surprised at that. I thought you had me waiting. Oh. That makes two of us, but not three. Are you conceding? No, no, absolutely not. I'll take the point, but I just, you know, <laughs> wait, wait, made a good effort, you know? And that's, I was just complimenting him. This episode of Distractable is sponsored by NordVPN. You guys know what I like? No. I like traveling, but also staying inside my house. So you bring your house with you when you travel. No, impractical. I want to sit in my favorite couch, but I want to be everywhere. And you know what, guys? I found the tool. Uh, teleportation? Found, no. Omniscience? Simpler. Omnipotence? What if I am omnipotent? What about that? How potent are you? Pretty potent. You can do exactly what I'm discussing with NordVPN. Oh. You can be in over 59 different countries just by clicking buttons on your device. Oh. It's virtual. I can be sitting on my couch in California and watching UK Netflix. Is this like a series of tubes under the ground that are like people movers and you jump in a tube and it sends you through the crust? No, he's too busy being hacked because he's traveling to all these places and it's not safe. It's not, not what you're saying, Mark, but also it's not. <laughs> but wait, you don't have to worry about the public places. Nord protects you in public places because it hides your information. Oh. It makes you, it makes you invisible. Literally. The, oh, good. But not literally. More figuratively. Even if you don't end up liking it. Then what? Then we're locked into some huge contract? No, there's no risk of that. It's a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can cruise the entire world. Is this just a virtual private network? Uh, you don't have superpowers? It's a VPN. It's just a really good VPN. And it makes your internet fast. It's magically fast. <laughs> But not magic. I use it so you know it be easy. All you have to do to grab your exclusive NordVPN deal is go to nordvpn.com slash distractible. You get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan plus four months for free. It's completely risk free because you also get the 30 day money back guarantee. This episode of Distractable is sponsored by Sundays. I love my dogs. I love my dogs. They're fine. Thanks for asking. And because I love them, I make sure that they have food that they look forward to and enjoy and is nutritious for them. Lexi's okay. My dog's fine. Uh, but what's wrong with the dirt sheets normally? You know, I used to be a dirt feeder, but I found that if you give them actual food, they are so much more grateful. What? benefit could that have? Dogs, they, they, they do whatever, you know? They, they lick stuff, they eat leaves, they don't care. They eat poop. It's fine. She's supposed to be kind of low energy, right? Kind of sickly. No, no, no. How dogs that's, are? That's actually not how they're supposed to be. You sure? I've learned this over time. Would dogs even like healthier food? Uh, you know, rumor has it that they do. And, you know, I don't have any scientific experience to back it up, but I'm pretty sure that if I feed them the first and only human-grade air-dried dog food, you know, combining nutrition and taste of all natural human-grade foods with the ease of zero prep and a ready-to-eat formula, so I'm not mixing and cooking and frying and air frying. I'm just, I plop it in their bowl and they get excited. They eat it up and they're so much happier. I gotta say, I was referencing a point a little bit lower about the taste test. You know, I bet if there was a taste test, which I have not seen, I would estimate that Sundays would probably outperform their competitors by 40 to zero. That's oddly specific for something you don't know. Why don't you take the quiz and get a vet recommended Sunday's feeding plan for your dog at sundaysfordogs.com slash distractible50 and get 50 50% off with code distractable50. That's S U N D A Y S F O R D O G S dot com slash D I S T R A C T I V L E 50% off with code distractable50. 
So now we're going to leave the realms of uh, logical discussions here. Oh, good. Great. So, Bob, you're not the devil's advocate now. You don't think people should personally own nukes, like have backyard atomic weapons. You don't believe in that. Wade? It's like yep. a home run. You're the devil's advocate for owning nukes. <laughs> oh, God. Personally. I love just um, one of these things I always get. I can't wait. All right. It's, all right. It's more fun for me. Don't worry about it. All right. <laughs> All right, so you, uh, Bob, uh, I'm going to keep this to 60 seconds now because I have a lot to get through and we're, we're slowing down. So we're going to do 60 second arguments okay. right, for this from now on. 60 seconds of why people should not personally own nukes. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, okay. one. I feel like my main argument against uh, individuals being able to own nuclear devices is... Uh, <laughs> I can yeah. Think how an individual might own a, a nuclear device. There's absolutely no reason that an individual person or family or even like a large group who live together and share it in a, a HOA or something would need that. Nobody needs nuclear devices, but they exist in a world full of conflict. And as a matter of deterrent and in the world that we live in, they exist and they are controlled by nations. But even the world at large agrees that some nations should not be in possession of nuclear devices because to have a nuclear weapon, you need to have the security to keep it uh, safe to keep it possessed, let alone using it. If a small nation does not have the means to keep a nuclear device secure from reaching the hands of someone who might do evil with it, then an individual certainly could not maintain an adequate level of security to keep them safe. All right, fair points, all very logical. I mean, I think we're all in agreement about that, except for Wade, are you ready? God, yes, that was a horrible argument. <laughs> I'm ready to destroy Three. it. Two, get me. One, go get them. We live in a world that's already in an arms race between countries. We have nukes. Russia has nukes. Uh, the North Korea wants nukes. China might have nukes. Who knows who all has nukes? On top of that, according to even movies and TV shows, you can get nuclear material and sell it to terrorists, so on and so forth. They might get nukes. How do we hold all of those people accountable? Corporations own governments. How do we hold them accountable? We also have nukes. That is how. And nobody does <laughs> need them. Bob's correct. Nobody needs nukes. But the fact of the matter is they exist. And that's the sad truth. So being as they do exist, it's only fair that we try to hold them accountable just like they hold each other accountable. There's a lot of accountability that needs to be had. The tech will come for safety. If we're all going to own nukes by the time we can get there, the tech will come. We'll have safety built in. And my final point, and probably most important one, it'd be really fucking cool to have a nuke. <laughs> That is a real. You uh, yield your time. You time, <laughs> yield your time. time. I do. That is a really good point. Uh, that ever all the other points maybe not so good because did that boil down to oh, not so good? Did, did it boil down to need more good guys with nukes? Is that what it boiled <laughs> down to? <laughs> Out I'm that. just saying we don't know who's going to be running governments in a hundred years, but if everyone has a nuke, no one's going to pull that trigger because they know it's the end for all. <laughs> it's the ultimate arms race, I love and it. everyone's getting a stick in there. I love it, and it would be super, super cool, Bob. You have thirty be seconds. Really fucking cool. <laughs> all right, three, two, one. Uh, my opponent argues that uh, individuals owning nukes would uh, be the ultimate form of accountability, corporate, government-wise, across the board. But we have people who can't even follow a speed limit. We have people who leave their shopping cart willy-nilly wherever they may desire in parking lots across the country, around the world. There is no way that individuals owning nukes would not lead to almost immediate and complete annihilation of the entire Earth and civilization as we know it. That is a good point. I feel also the same, but, you know, I'm ready to be convinced, Wade. <laughs> I'm, I'm so ready. I'm, it would be so I've got my cool. point. Three, two, one. A lot of nukes already exist. The world is still here. More nukes, still world. And on top of that, <laughs> when the aliens come, who the fuck is ready? Our planet. <laughs> Time yielded. <laughs> Bring it on, little green man! We're ready for you! The best oh. part of that by far is more nukes, still world. <laughs> <laughs> God, this is it's a really uh, compelling point. <laughs> I gotta say, I'm so wanting to be on your side about the cool factor. However, you are on my side. I can see it in your eyes. The idea of you specifically with a nuke. I, you don't even know how to set up like the audio equipment that's sitting around your computer. You know that thing will still be in the box. It's fine. Yeah, but that's <laughs> kind of the problem. They need maintenance 
A lot of it. Yeah, they can be pretty unstable. It's true. The regulations will come. <laughs> you see, I, the, the argument of the tech will come. <laughs> Here's a point in my favor for me personally. You know what I had to order recently was another Synology because my NAS uh -huh. died from a power surge. Mm -hmm. I got one last Thursday. Same day. Opened it up. Set it up. It's working right now. Oh my god, you plugged it in and inserted <laughs> hard drives? If I can change, the world can too. Give us nukes. Oh man, uh, I got... Uh, uh, Full man. factor, Wade factor. Gotta weigh it. All right. Full bigger. I just... Ah, oh, sorry, Wade. I just can't... I can't abide. Nukes in space! Baba, uh, you 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 win. I'm a little surprised you didn't go with the cool factor argument. I gotta be honest, it was very effective. <laughs> very hey, that's a few in a row. I'm surprised I've lost, but hey. <laughs> 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 Uh, that like, leaves us tied, doesn't it? Uh, right you don't now, get a point for that. You just don't also get a point. It's actually, Bob, you are one up. Oh. Maybe I should switch it so that if you win the debate, no matter what, you get a point. Otherwise, it's just going to stay here because the devil's advocate side is going to get harder. <laughs> so there needs to be some opportunity for points. Oh, great, man. It's been so easy so far. No, that means wait in this I next... I hate babies and love nukes. In this next one, you can win a point if you get... You're not the oh. devil's advocate here, so you beat can... Beat me, win. You can beat him and you can get a point. Use your words. That way, I'm, I'm growing to like Devil's Advocate. Can I just stay here? Oh, but that's the fun one. No, it's no, a fun one. Okay. All right, so. <laughs> okay. Bob, you are now the Devil's Advocate. Like the nukes would be fun. Uh, okay. Uh, you, well, okay, Wade, you are not the Devil's Advocate. You don't like child labor. You don't think kids should be sent into the coal mines. You don't think kids should be working. Bob, you're the Devil's Advocate for child labor. Okay. Are you ready? Easy. Well, no, Wade, Wade. Oh, yeah, Wade's first. <laughs> Wade's first. Wade, are you ready? Yeah. All right, three, two, one. There has been research over time that I can't even get into that exists as to why child labor is a bad thing. Look it up. Just do a quick Google search. You'll find it. Health. Long-term health. The viability, dependability. How much work can a child do versus an adult? How much are we setting children back by making them work? There are so many different things that are wrong with child labor. On top of that, child labor usually comes with being underpaid for service as well, which is also a cruel thing to do. And on top of that, diluting the workforce by giving parents less money because kids are in the workforce making pennies on the dime because the parents are depending on that income is a horrible thing. From a long-term health standpoint, from a money standpoint, from a fucking moral standpoint, everything about child labor is bad unless you're the one sitting on top smoking your cigar sitting on your mound of money it's a terrible thing that should not have ever happened it definitely should not happen moving forward that's a good point oh well made very good bob are you ready i am is it 60 seconds 60 seconds i'm just yes. kind of i going. am ready the kids wrote your speech and you're ready to go oh yeah <laughs> <For God. laughs> Three, two, one. The planet is dying. And it's because we have a gener multiple generations of freeloaders converting food into carbon monoxide and waste, contributing nothing to the planet. Now, I would not advocate that any child should be set to work the moment they're born and work till the moment they die. But children are capable. Children can do many things. My opponent attempted to describe all the ways that child labor is wrong and immoral, but succeeded only in describing all of the ways in which child labor has been misused and inappropriately applied throughout history. Should children earn the same as adults? No, they're not capable of the same work. They should earn a commensurate amount. That needs to be researched. Should children do the same tasks as adults? No, they're not as strong, they're not as big. What can children do? This should also be researched. If we optimize child labor, it can be safe. It can save the planet and it can make the world a better place. Well, that was like on the dot finished for I got my a timer, timer in front of me. Yeah, I'm oh, trying to like- It was beautiful. It, to, and you mm. captured my attention. The header of that speech, the world is like, I it, I was enraptured. I, I was focused. I think we need to do some research. I could sell cigarettes to an asthmatic. All right, okay. So- What? Never mind. ignore that. A straight to selling cigarettes as my patient <laughs> says a really good one. Ah, that's me, baby. Trust me, Bob. <laughs> Just believe everything I tell you. Uh, all right. So, Wade, uh, you heard all of those points. Are you ready for your rebuttal? Yeah. All right, three, two, one. Very simply, from the National Library of Medicine, child labor prevents the normal well-being, including physical, intellectual, emotional, psychosocial development of children, period. And it cannot be 
eliminated by the enforcement of labor laws and regulations. It is hurting kids, period. Let the world die, save the children. Did you yield your time? When you say it like that, of course I do. <laughs> So, wait, did you just argue that there's no point regulating it? No. It's, no, it's, bad for, it's conclusively bad for children. Yeah. The point being is, even if the world were dying and having child labor might help it trot along, the damage we're doing to children is like, what world are we going to be leaving them? What are they going to have anyway? They will be so devastated from having been forced into the workforce at such a young age. Okay, that's fair. No. No matter what, do not let them in the workforce. I thought I heard something about, like, laws can't stop it or something like that. <laughs> I thought I heard No, no. Regulations can't even regulating child labor doesn't help oh, child labor it, like it, not be bad. Sorry, I need some clarification. You can't even just regulate, you just have to eliminate All entirely. Right. That's a fair I'm brought back. I I get it. Oh man, what was I even thinking? Bob, what was I thinking? I don't know. I don't know. I can't I'll tell you. Three, two, one, <laughs> go. Murder will happen even if murder is not illegal. Let's just let it all go. That's the world my opponent envisions. The idea that child labor cannot be fixed with regulations ignores completely the fact that children labor and toil in their own homes, in their own fields, on their family's farm, or wherever it may be, and that is completely unregulated. Adults may do as they wish with their children. At least if a child works in the workforce, they may be paid and protected by regulation. That is a good... We don't want... <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those that are just listening, I am staring incredulously at my screen. <laughs> just taken aback by such a strong argument. Oh, sure. So I cannot believe my ears. Yeah, man. Oh, I kind of want to see what these children are capable of, you know? Like, <laughs> we need to research this. <laughs> You know what? I'll, I'll let you die on that. No, you no, guys no, can go. no. Uh, I'm going to give away. This is what I really believe, okay? Don't make <laughs> jokes about it. Breaking news. Markiplier enforces child labor. <laughs> All right, I will give the point to Wade. <laughs> Damn, I can't send those kids back just yet. Endorses? I endorses. Once I see the research, I will allow you to do the research, Bob. Oh, I don't think that research would be legal either. <laughs> I will give you a special. <laughs> I'll give you a special circumstance with which to research this. But you can't pay those kids. If you pay them, it's a job, and that's child labor, and that's illegal. Well, that breaks the entire system. Yeah, it's a workforce experiment. People in the workforce get paid a little. I want to see your own holes camp, but no more. More than that. You get them digging okay, holes, good. nothing more. Character building. That really funded holes camp. Got it. Pay them in positive reinforcement. I'm proud of you, Timmy. You did good today. Oh, thank you. Can I have some more? Tomorrow. <laughs> get back to work. Okay. All right. So. Make it worse from here? <laughs> I feel good about this. I'm excited. This is fun. We don't have that much time, so I'm going to try to just like pick one. Oh, thank or, God. Probably just one more, honestly, because how much time it's been taking. But this is very, very good. Man, I want to do another one. <laughs> I want to participate in one of these. Okay, so I've got I've got some options. Let's see. Wade, it's currently right now it is oh, it's tied. Oh. Well Wade gets to play the fun role on the final one. That sucks. Woo! You want to do fine. Just Advantage me sounds good to me. Just because it's fun doesn't mean he's any better at it than I am. Of course it does. <laughs> I've got this. Man, I really I really don't know which one to pick from. More nuclear weapons. More nuclear More child labor. <laughs> no. Children making nuclear weapons. Abortion! Abortion! On plane! <laughs> Well, Bob, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna since you are the you're the normal voice, right? You're not the devil's advocate here. Yeah, I'm the I'm the uh, correct opinion. We're gonna because Wade has an uphill battle. It's currently tied. However, we know that the devil's advocate is a little bit more difficult. I have DM'd you a list of what I have. What do you think you would have the best chance with? I don't see this DM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't DM it to, to you. Me. Oh, I see. Just to me, because I'm on, I'm on the harder side. I think theoretically for some of these. Oh boy. Well, I know which one I would want. I guess. Uh, oh, that's not how you highlight one word. <laughs> Please don't end my career. Ah, Please don't end my career. <laughs> that is a good one. No, this is I fine. Think, this, I is think fine. This, is great. this will be fine. I, I agree. I concur. That's what I was leaning towards, and I think it'll be a great finisher. Wade, you are the devil's advocate in this round. I think it'll okay. be a good one. Bob, you believe in stopping and ending world hunger. Wade, I'm here for it. You're the devil's advocate <laughs> in a hungry world. You <laughs> 60 seconds on the clock. Are you ready? Why did you Let's do, do this? All right, three, two, one. By any means necessary, there is a crisis that is ongoing and getting exponentially worse that we must deal with. 
Mm-hmm. This planet has a maximum capacity. A oh, maximum God. Maximum capacity for growing food and a maximum capacity of bodies and living beings that it can house. Clearly, we have not maximized the amount of food we can produce, but it's close. Given our current levels of technology, allocations of land between nations and people, it's hard to produce as much food as we need. It's not hard to eliminate the number of mouths we have to feed. There is a simple solution that governments already participate in for other reasons. Population reduction will save our world, will save our climate, will make food more readily available, will eliminate hunger around the world where it is a plague on many people, and give everyone a little bit of extra elbow room, which I'm not going to hear any complaints about. Uh, that, was a, that was a bold take on... That's a different perspective on world hunger than you usually hear. Uh, world hunger is a serious issue. I put a lot of thought into this. I'm compelled in ways I didn't expect to be compelled about your own. <laughs> I don't know if that's good, but okay. I don't know if it's good either. Uh, Wade, uh, the, the stage has been set. Did you give a reason, uh, a way to do the population control? What was your solution to population Oh, control? I kept that vague on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cool. All right, Wade. Cool. Your counterpoint in three, two, one. Overpopulation is not a problem on my planet. In fact, have as much sex as you want. It won't matter. Why? Because a hungry world is a motivated world, and those that don't eat won't last. And if you want food, you have to earn it on my planet. And if you earn it, you'll eat. You'll be fine. And if you don't earn it, well, then I guess you're not a problem anymore. <laughs> We live in a world already where to get on the top, you have to step on those beneath you. And if you want to get to the top, it's even easier in a world where everyone's hungry and starving, as it is. I'm helping you get to the top easier. I'm helping the population. I'm helping everything. And you can sin and fuck all you want. It's a perfect planet. Join me in it. I yield my time. <laughs> okay oh, then. Deviating from the topic of world hunger. No, no. I, but, he he <laughs> countered my points pretty effectively, but I've got a rebuttal. Okay, are you do have a rebuttal? Oh yeah, I'm ready. I knew what Both I was saying. Both of you seem dead set on killing people, which I think is a strange oh, thing. I'm just allowing world hunger. I've tried every other uh, way to go about it. So I don't know. <laughs> All right, Bob, you're you're rebuttaling. I'm Three, ready. Two, one. My opponent argues that he would create this utopia where everyone would would live the life of luxury that's a lie what he argues for is a world of dog eat dog literal humans eating humans because they can't get food because they lack skills or whatever value that that society deems most important in my world the government will carefully critically classify each individual and will make the choice and do the deed for you you actually get to live in a utopia created and crafted for you fed to your heart's desire plus you can have all the sex you want <laughs> oh all right. It sounded really bad there for a while, and then that last part, it really oh, yeah. sexy you want. Ooh. I like snacks. Wow. Yeah, no, that part, that's the real core of it. Interesting. You both are in agreement with that. That's a great thing. Yeah, Wade, what's your rebuttal? Unless you're just going to yield it. No, I've got, one. I've got a little more. All right, okay. All right, three, two, one. All right, he's worried about the weak being eaten. And guess what? That's not a problem while I'm sitting on my bone throne. You can eat the weak. You cannot eat the weak. <laughs> and eventually enough people will starve or world hunger probably won't be a problem again anyway. Done. Drop mic. You yield your time? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what more is there to say? I'm bone on my bone throne. Made of human bones. Uh, <laughs> Holy shit. I'm good. Uh... <laughs> I'm <laughs> who wins? <laughs> fuck if I know what the fuck just happened in that debate. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Maybe this debate was unhealthy for us, and Bob and I have descended into madness the longer yeah. we had to play devil's advocate. You might be right about that. Wow. I'm gonna flip a coin. <laughs> I'll be right back while you do that. My nukes just arrived. Your nukes just arrived. All right, you gotta make sure you get them in the nuke cooler before they just go. Leave it in the box. That's fine. I'll open it later. All right. Sounds good. I'm literally going to flip a coin. Oh, come on, Mark. How, How the, the fuck am I going to pick of our arguments? Both of you My <laughs> sex or his sex? What you sex didn't is better? It's better to, to let people kill each other out of desperation or kill people purposefully. You glossed over the world hunger basis of everything. We were both addressing world hunger as a broader issue of the global crisis. It was you are against world hunger, he's pro, and then you both focused on sex. I was very... I thought he said snacks, but oh god. Like Bobby were too? I don't know. No, my way would 
would have absolutely and definitively solved world hunger after it was fully implemented, maybe after a generation or so, but, you know, it's hard to get rid of that many bodies at once. Yeah, mine too. We just were in the means, not the result. You didn't say you were concerned about loss of life or humanity. You said you were concerned about world hunger, which I directly addressed. Can't hear you down there. Too busy living on top. <laughs> I'm... Uh, <laughs> By the way, I leave my shopping cart anywhere I damn well please. I'm gonna flip a coin. Flip a coin, uh, Mark. Flip, flip a coin. The winner of this hotly contested debate comes down to a mere heads or tails. Can we see the coin proof that there's a heads and a tail? Yeah. That's a blurry circle. <laughs> yeah, I believe you. Uh, oh, there you go. It's a quarter. Okay, there's a head. I believe you. Uh, oh, that was the head. Oh, okay, double head. <laughs> who, who wants heads, heads. heads or tails? You call it win. I want heads. Right. Well, there's two wait, sides wait. that are heads. <laughs> that ain't your mic. It, it fell. Should I respin it? I don't it trust or... this coin flip. Should I respin it or use it? It no. was random. Use it. Keep it. Okay. What did you say, Wade? Heads. Heads. There's tails. Ah! There it is. There's yeah. a tree on there. There's tails. Totally legit. Like the head I, of I... broccoli is the tree part. That could also be a head. <laughs> it's not an <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> it's a head of a tree. <laughs> Can we uh, devil's advocate? That could be a double headed coin. It's not. It's uh, not. In perspective. It's not. It's a not, though. It is a, a head. And it's a head. And a tree. And a head of broccoli. And a tree. What I, which is what I meant to call. Uh-huh. Anyway. He, he, I did hear him under his breath say head of broccoli. <laughs> Well, it's a tree, so even in that regard, it would be a loss. You know what? I so, want to lose. Subreddit, defend me! <laughs> <laughs> I will you have my back! This was a new experiment, and I did change the, like, earning point rule in the middle, but that did work in your favor, Wade, or else it would have been a washout. So it was closer because of that. Washout. Yeah, no, so this was a, a little bit haphazard. I just cobbled this together before. I want to do another one of these, though, because it was very fun. I want one of you to yeah, jump Yeah, no, in it's fun. It. You should be. You should contribute. It's fun. We got, like, Devil's Advocate, too, but we'll wait a while to do it. But thank you for your lovely side to this debate. We didn't get through nearly as many as I thought, but I guess judging by our tier list, we usually don't. But Bob is the winner. Yeah. He devilly advocated more. Devilishly. Or you just didn't agree with the devil enough. I think I agreed with your devilry both the same. No, yeah, I mean, yes. I, did I? You won the devilry on the shopping cart. I won the devil on the babies, which was more of a toss-up because it was not that hard of an issue. Yeah. And I won the devil on the speed limits. Yes, I was compelled for the speed limits. But then Wade won the devil. What was after speed limits? Nukes. Wade won nukes. Nukes. We, we each won almost all of our devil rounds, right? Buy a nuke, work the children. <laughs> God. My uh, favorite country song. <laughs> it's hard yeah. to win. I only won a, uh, a pro side because I uh, won the coin flip. That's fair, that's fair. <laughs> so what we really All learned right. is Mark is the devil's advocate. Didn't you take two points from yourself, Wade? Or did that get fixed? You also took two points from yourself, oh, Bob, so it started right. on an okay. even plane. Yes. Uh, but Bob is today's winner. Congratulations. I will not take any criticisms on my judging. I am fair and impartial. And that was the whole point I'll of this. I'll take criticisms on his judging. No, don't. Don't no. let me subreddit. it. You've got You're my back. To, you Join can't. my utopia. Nukes for as everyone. That's the judge. Everyone's hungry, but they have nukes. Like, and sex. And so much sex. <laughs> so much sex. <laughs> Nothing's anyway. better than hungry sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shirt right there. <laughs> God, all right. So I will close this up. <laughs> the winner speech. This was an incredibly fun game, and I feel like I literally won because of the coin toss because it was really funny. Whoever was the devil's advocate. Good job, Wade. I'm sorry, Mark is so biased against you. Thank you. Thank you. I saw the criticism. I'm just stating facts. I I will take this opportunity to speak for myself and give my loser speech. Bob, you were a trustworthy and worthy opponent who was very honorable in the end. Mark, the terrible judge. Not a criticism, just a fact. Uh, <laughs> uh, failed us both. Um, and I feel like I lost because of poor judging. And <coughs> so, uh, subreddit, get my back, defend me, tell me why I'm great, and uh, that's it for me. I feel like I'm supposed to have power in this. I feel like I'm supposed to be. Can I be on the bone throne? Is that bone throne like for multiple definitions? When if you crawl your way up and step on the bones of the hungry, sure. <laughs> Don't right, worry, I'll have I'll... the children clean it up later. <laughs> <laughs> I hate right, you. Uh, God, I hate you. Uh, follow us on our various social medias, but most importantly, follow the podcast for more updates. We do more bullshit like this. Uh, well, not like this. Not like this. Not like this. <laughs>
It's a fun time for everyone to learn morals and uh, be good people going into the future, which is what we may or may not believe in. Thank you, Bob, and thank you, Wade, Lord Minion 777 MySkirm, at various places, and on Twitch. Thanks for listening. I'm sorry for my poor judgment. Not a criticism, just a fact. So are we. Uh, <laughs> podcast out. Bye. Holy crap. <laughs> what was that? went terrible than expected oh my god I I think I played was it I think we played devil's advocate in high school like in one of my like English classes I can't remember which one but I think I played devil's advocate before and it's not fun depending on the topic it's not fun I think our topic was based on like a character from a book or something like that I'm not sure but yeah, it's not fun, depending on your topic. It could be very easy or very difficult. It's, it very depends on the person and the topic. And in this case, it was, it was, uh, that was just impossible, Mark. Like, why would you even, like, put that up as, like, a debate, like, a conversation to have? <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my Lord. But anyway, I, I, I don't know what to say about this episode. It's funny, as always. Uh, but I guess I'll see you guys next time. Uh, I'll try to get him more atone to my commands. I put him down for certain commands so when he hears it, he's supposed to turn the lights blue and put on distractible. That's what he was supposed to do, but he failed. And I'm trying to program to do this, but it's not working. If you have ideas of how to work my, my him, you know who I'm talking about, like, if I say his name, he lights up and that and waits for my question like a damn stalker, like listening for his name. But that's literally his job. Like, let me know any commands I can put in this thing that will work. You know. Anyway, uh, I gotta do some more homework, but uh, I'll see you guys later. It's been A D D D Y. I don't know. But I'll see you guys later. <laughs>